Good afternoon. I hope you're all doing well this afternoon and uh, surviving at home. Um, I'm here with 13, 11, nine-year-old. We have a three and a half year old dog. And for some reason, Megan and I decided to add a puppy to the household last Saturday. So things have been a little bit crazy at the bank's household. I wanna take this time to thank you for the trust and confidence that you've placed not only in myself, but also with the team at Forum Credit Union. We are very grateful for the trust and, and the confidence you have in us during the prosperous times, but also during these trying times to where the plan that we ask you to maintain seems invisible. And why it feels so unusual for us to collectively take care of ourselves and our families to do our part to flatten the curve by staying home and to avoid an invisible enemy. We trust that it is the best solution for all of us. Similarly, there are long-term investment disciplines that we know are hard at work during these times, even while we can't see them. We wanted to spend some time highlighting these disciplines with you so that we can maintain our conviction during these trying times. And at this point in time, I'm going to share my screen and we are going to take a look at a few slides. And these were populated by, populated by JP Morgan. And we just believe them to be, to be a very simple view of the markets. On this first slide, um, we're going to look at a chart, some call it the quilt chart, the skittle chart, the Cowan chart. It goes by a host of names. And, and what it's showing us is every asset class from stocks, bonds, commodities to cash, and a 15-year rolling time period of returns. Cutting through the middle of the chart is a hypothetical blend or diversified portfolio composed of different weights of each of these asset classes. Those specific weights are listed at the bottom of, of the chart in footnotes. And on the far right-hand side of the chart, we show both annualized returns and annualized market volatility during the 15 years. First, it would have been impossible to historically predict what the next hot asset class would have been from one year to the next. Sometimes you see safe haven asset classes like bonds, such as in 2020 so far, end up at the very top of the chart only to end up finishing at the bottom of the chart the next year and so on and so forth. Second, the diversified portfolio that is in the light gray moves through the center of the page and you'll notice is never at the top and is never at the bottom of the chart, showing that diversification is doing exactly what it is supposed to do. And if you zoom in on the far right hand side, the last two columns that will show you during that 15 year time period, what the diversified portfolio averaged annualized returns and with that, that it had one of the lowest volatilities that there were out there. Moving forward, our second chart, if Benji can learn how to use this, there we go, uh, speaks to two important things. The first is time, and the second is diversification. And this is done through a very sweet and simple example. On this page, we show stock returns, bond returns, and a very simple 50-50 split of stocks and bonds. This is a simplistic version of diversification. And what we are showing here is the very best and the very worst return of each of these three asset classes over different time periods. The one, five, 10, and 20 year rolling periods. The first observation is simple. If, you, if, if your time horizon is only one year, almost anything can be expected from the stock market. Historically, you've seen one-year returns as good as 47% on the upside and as bad as 39% on the downside. A lar large range of outcomes are possible in any one-year time horizon. For investors who can, it is important to have a longer, term or longer time horizon. Using the examples of the five, 10, and 20-year rolling time periods, the range of return outcomes shrinks in size and is much more positive. That is, time is on your side. With the volatility of returns shrinking as the investment horizon gets longer. Lastly, zooming in on the 50-50 only blended portfolio, we can see the diversification strategy never had a negative return for the rolling five, 10, and 20 year periods, making the case yet again for diversification in a simple 
but compelling way. Now moving forward to our next slide. This is a, probably the most important page of what we call the guide to the markets, which is what JP Morgan um, it provides us with these slides. It speaks both to the importance of the diversification and the damaging impact of investor behavior. The chart on the top shows the path of three model portfolios. The two blue lines represent a 60-40 stock to bond and then a 40-60 stock to bond model portfolio, while the olive green line represents the S&P 500 index on its own. Now the punchline is that all three portfolios more or less end up in the same place. And that would be great if it wasn't for the ride and how they got there being so different. I think we can all agree as investors that the journey is just as important as the destination. While the S&P 500 portfolio lost about 50% of its value during 2008 crisis, the diversified portfolio lost half as much. As well, the diversified portfolios have had a much smoother ride upward since then. The rest of the chart perhaps is even more compelling. Despite the fact that the green line or the stock market has had a 200% run and outperformed the broadly diversified portfolio ever since 2009 or the bottom of the financial crisis, the account values for the hypothetically diversified portfolios would have been higher throughout the entire experience because the portfolios lost less during this downturn. And in these slides just go to speak um, to what I've talked with any, with each and every one of you that we want to keep these portfolios as diversified as possible so we can ride through, you know, the roughest of waters or the smoothest of waters. Again, as I started this message, I want to take this time to thank you. A lot of you have been extremely valued clients for a very long time, and I do not take that for granted. I, I thank every day for, for my clients and the ability and, and the trust that you place in me. So as we move forward through this, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns or just need to chat, pick up the phone and call me. My cell phone, for those that don't have it, is 317-727-0863. You can always contact me via voicemail on my um, work line or via email. I really hope you all had a wonderful Easter holiday, and I look forward to seeing you all in person as soon as possible. Have a great day.